Back to school is right around the corner, so what better time to round up the absolute best iPad apps for students? Let's ramble. Hold up. Place go well when I pull up. They all on me like it once. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So, guys, we have done a ton of iPad apps videos on this channel. In fact, it was the 2020 iPad Pro that got this channel started in the first place. Now, we have talked about a lot of different apps, and there's always been some shiny new apps on the horizon, and of course, we love checking those out. But there is a small core of apps that I always keep coming back to, either because they keep reinventing themselves or because they're just that good. Some apps have been king of the hill within their own categories and they've managed to stay there for the longest time. And there is a specific list of apps that I think are absolute must-haves for students. Some of these apps are no-brainers, but they just deserve a mention, and some of these apps you might not know or you may have forgotten about them. In that case, they're definitely worth revisiting. The best example of that for me is probably Evernote. Once a fresh new app, this has now become one of the OGs in note-taking and archiving, and while there are new apps that definitely give Evernote a run for its money, and we will discuss some of those apps later in the video, Evernote is one of those apps that has managed to keep reinventing itself and to stay relevant. As a student, you're flooded with emails, messages, and other bits of information. To keep things organized, if you're not familiar with it, I would encourage you to check out a productivity system called Getting Things Done by David Allen. In a nutshell, GTD works as follows. Everything you get goes into an inbox. From there, you look at it and you decide, can I do this straight away in less than two minutes? If the answer is yes, you do it right then and there. If the answer is no, you send it to one of two places. You either send it to to do next, or you archive it in a folder called someday maybe. Your to do next folder becomes your holy grail. It's the basis of all of your to dos. And the idea behind this is that you can never forget anything ever again. Evernote is practically built for this system. Their logo is even an elephant and elephants never forget either. So let's say you receive an email. Can you take care of it in two minutes? Great, do it. Does it require more time? Send it to Evernote. Then at set times during the day, you revisit that list and you work your way through it. Now, where Evernote gets really useful is that you can turn those notes and emails you send into Evernote into all kinds of actionable items. You can create to-dos, set reminders, you attach documents, images, audio clips, video clips, you can handwrite, you can draw, and of course you can invite fellow students to collab. Once you're done, you just archive the note and keep it forever. The cool thing about Evernote is that it's built around using tags, not folders. And that way it is extremely easy to find things using its excellent search function. The app had a complete facelift not too long ago, and I'm currently using it as my main to-do app again. So whether you've used it in the past or you never used it, I would definitely encourage you to check it out. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Probably the best known recent Evernote competitor is Notion. Now Notion has a good amount of stuff going for it. It offers way more freedom and flexibility than Evernote. It's basically built like a giant database that lets you construct your own systems and your own workflows. I use Notion on a daily basis as well, mainly to manage this YouTube channel. Obviously Notion is a fantastic app, but it's only great if you know your way around a database and you're willing to put in some time to build your own system. I find myself constantly tweaking my Notion to make it more efficient for my workflow, but be aware that this can be a real time sink and that sometimes trying to get to the perfect productivity system actually keeps you from doing your actual work and being productive. Evernote does not have that problem. The system is what it is and it's basically plug and play. The other big negative for me in Notion is that you can't email stuff into the app, which makes it not ideal for the getting things done system. I do know that this is a much requested feature, so who knows, maybe Notion will add that feature in a future update. So in my opinion, both apps are great for students. It just depends on the type of person you are. Do you like to spend a lot of time to tinker with your system, or do you just want a simple system that works straight out of the box? Moving on to my favorite note-taking app of all time, and that is Notability. There are so many great note-taking apps and it almost seems like there's a new note-taking app in the App Store every single week. But there's two apps, two kings of the hill that have not been knocked down by any of those new apps, GoodNotes and Notability. Between those two apps, I think it 100% comes down to preference and you're either team GoodNotes or team Notability. The reason why I prefer Notability over GoodNotes is the live audio recording option. This option basically allows you to record audio while you write your notes, and then once you revisit your notes, you just tap on the part in your notes that you're interested in, and you can hear what was being said at that exact point in time. 
This option basically allows you to record audio while you write your notes, and then once you revisit your notes, you just tap on the part in your notes that you're interested in. So you can imagine how awesome this feature is for lectures. You can even just note down bullet points while listening to a lecture, and then tap on that particular bullet point later on to listen to that part of the lecture. That way, you can spend more time listening and less time writing. Absolutely love this feature, and that is why Notability is still number one must-have handwriting app in my list. Now I'm gonna use this perfect little segue to thank the sponsor of today's video, Paperlike. Handwriting on the iPad is fantastic. I love using my iPad Pro for bigger projects, and the Mini is a great little notepad. But I hate how slippery the Apple Pencil feels when you're trying to write directly on the glass surface. Paperlike mimics the feeling of writing on actual paper. You get more control of the pencil when writing, sketching, or drawing due to the paper-like resistance and roughness. It makes your handwriting look much prettier. It also drastically reduces glare and fingerprints. But because of the Nano Dots technology, it doesn't make your screen look all grainy. Paperlike also recently came out with a new pencil grip to make the handwriting experience even better and an all-in-one cleaning solution that is now pretty much the only microfiber I use. I definitely recommend you to check out these products. There's a link in the description. Right, back to my list of must-have apps. Now this one is another recording app, but unlike the recording option in Notability, this app is a standalone and a very powerful one at that. It's called Just Press Record, and it's literally just a giant red button that does what it's supposed to do as soon as you tap it. Now there's two things that make this app an absolute must-have. One is that it's available on all your Apple devices. I have it installed on my MacBook, my iPhone, my iPad, and my Apple Watch, so I can hit record no matter what, no matter where I am, and it will always sync up to the same account. The second reason this app deserves a spot in this list is its excellent transcription feature. You can record entire lectures like this, and all you have to do afterwards is clean up the text a little bit. I mean, no AI app is 100% accurate, but this is pretty close, and it's an absolute time saver. Not to mention one of the most convenient apps out there. To store all my files, I tend to hop around between Dropbox and Google Drive, but for students, I do feel that Google Drive makes more sense. Dropbox does have decent collaboration tools these days, but way more people use Google Docs or Sheets, and of course, Google Meet for video calls with fellow students. The collaboration tools are amazing, and a Google Workspace plan doesn't cost anything at first, and even if you do need to upgrade to get more space, for example, you can probably find a really good student discount. Of course, there are plenty of other storage solutions, but again, these two are king of the hill, and you can be sure that they're not going anywhere anytime soon. By the way, I just want to give a quick shout out to FlexiSpot for sending me this desk. This is the FlexiSpot E7 desk. Normally they come with this kind of desktop, but I customized this one with a really nice IKEA one that isn't actually a desktop, it's a kitchen countertop. But because the legs and the motors on this thing are so strong, you can basically use whatever you want as a desktop and it will carry it just fine. I use this desk as my iPad desk and I love the fact that I can stand at it from time to time. Editing these videos means sitting down for extended periods of time, which isn't great for your back or your blood circulation, and this helps a little. They're not sponsoring this video in any way, shape, or form, but I have been meaning to show off their desk in a video as a thank you for sending it to me. I love it. I'll put a link to their website in the video description in case you want to check it out for yourself. Also very cool is that you can actually program settings to go to a specific height. So I have this set for sitting down, and there's another setting for standing up, which will always bring it to the exact same height. So this next thing is not so much an app, but a feature that will be launching to the public very soon with iPadOS 16, and that is Stage Manager. As a student, multitasking on the iPad is absolutely essential. And while that was already possible to some extent, it just got a whole lot better with Stage Manager, which lets you group more apps and lets you resize windows almost entirely freely, which makes a huge difference. You can activate and deactivate Stage Manager by simply tapping on this button in the iPad's control center. And last but not least, iPadOS 16 finally lets us hook up the iPad to an external monitor without those hideous black bars. And you can now use your external monitor as a proper external screen, not just to mirror what's on your iPad, which makes multitasking even better. And for some people, that might just mean they can now truly use the iPad as their one and only device. 
Just be aware that this option will only be available to M1 iPads, at least for the time being. I did an entire video going over all the features. If you're interested in that, just click the link up here. If using the iPad as a computer is not your jam, the M2 MacBook Air might be a great alternative for you. And of course, we did a couple of videos on that machine as well. I'll be sure to link to that at the end of this one. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.